What is up guys, welcome to a brand new video. Now this time uh, we're showing off the real 2019 liveries that have been launched by the cars. We're a little bit late um, considering when the cars were actually launched, but um, it does take some time um, to get them all buffed out. The first one we're looking at is the Sport Pessa Racing Point or Racing Dot. Um, it's a really weird logo, but um, this, this livery as a whole, it's actually, I really, really do like it. Like the blue just brings it all together in my opinion um it's just one of those liveries that you see and you just you just kind of like you know what i mean it's just it's difficult to like put a finger on it and uh stuff like that you can see we're at uh kota uh we're doing the short version of the track just because um we already did the full circuit with the has team so you know in theory there's what 20 liveries we did two renault so technically 21 if we do the ferraris then We'll probably end up redoing some tracks, but for the most part, we'll just stick with the um, trying to do tracks we haven't done and stuff like that. So Monaco is obviously going to be a pain in the ass, but we started off with this one. We started off at the back, um, which will be the trend for most of these races. Um, just get a little bit of action and fire. There is the hovering rain light of the Alfa Romeo. We'll get into that um, eventually when we cross that car, but it's going to be a pain in my ass. That is. I already had a few complaints about it, but. We'll focus on the racing point just for now. Um, as a whole, this livery didn't really change much. Uh, obviously, the implementation of the blue, it, it does look good. It looks really good, uh, especially on the halo here. What we've had to do is just put the top fin uh, round about more or less the same color as the engine cover. Uh, obviously, with a sport pacer uh, rounding on the top. but. This was a real difficult car to make, um, especially on the Force India chassis. Um, it, it was just impossible to get all the stuff working, um, especially with like the parts here and there. So it is on the Williams chassis. Um, I know I'm going to get bullied <laughs> for putting it on the Williams chassis, but I mean, what can you do? Uh, the liveries this year were definitely a pain in the butt. But um, as we progress through this gameplay, I'll, you can see that I'm getting a little bit more confident right up the gearbox of uh, Kimi at the moment but we're just trundling along doing what we can uh, as Sergio Perez. I had, to I had to figure out then because obviously we've got Stroll behind us so it was a bit difficult to try and grasp which one we were uh, driving as then but we got the inside of Kimi Raikkonen a uh, little bit of contact there uh, being a little bit aggressive on the finish driver but you know you've got to do what you've got to do uh, especially in these five lap races there's not a lot of um, opportunity to do and stuff like that but um as you see we're coming on to start the third lap in just a minute just behind lando norris and i believe ahead of him is a Haas, uh if my eyesight is correct which normally it isn't but i don't know how they're going to do this year um they've got a massive task obviously force india were doing a fantastic job as they were um they obviously lost the number fourth spot to renault and then obviously Haas came in and then they kind of filtered around about there. Obviously, the administration obviously didn't make it easier for the team. But at the same point, I don't see how they're going to be able to reclaim that. So I reckon if they can beat Haas, then that'll be good for them. Um, it's not impossible, but I reckon uh, Racing Point will fall down the grid a little bit. Um, probably be battling with the McLaren as we are as of right now. But I feel like Haas will just be out of reach for them depending on what kind of package they have because obviously they started very late uh, building their car then Force India was known for bringing B-spec cars I feel that it's essentially the same team there's a lot more money put into it uh, same personnel and stuff like that so I wouldn't be surprised if halfway through the season you see a B-spec racing point car which will come in and obviously just do bits and then obviously get them up the order a little bit probably be a little bit too late like it was last year but what could you do uh, in terms of Lance Stroll, it's, it's going to be a difficult one because I'm not sure how the dynamic will work between him and Sergio Perez. See, as you know, it's daddy's team in a sense. Um, Perez, I don't, I can't see him staying um, after this year. It'd be interesting to see because I'm not sure if the title sponsor is uh, to do with Perez or just the team as a whole. But if that is the case, if it is Perez uh, that he's affiliated with, then... Jesus Christ, that was all for Corica. Um, If it is affiliate with Perez, then they'll, they'll keep him on just for the sake of that, unless obviously Perez decides to walk and, you know, maybe try his hand at Formula E, which is a possibility. Any one of these drivers on the grid could go to Formula E these days. Uh, it's growing in so much popularity. 
uh, especially with Mercedes and Porsche joining next year. But we're gonna have to we're gonna have to see what we can do. I reckon my predictions for Racing Point in Australia now that's gonna be interesting. Um, I would have to say I don't think they'll get in the points. I really don't. Um, I reckon P12 for Perez and P15 for Stroll. That's that's my prediction. Uh, we'll come back to this probably afterwards and um, see see how we do. In all fairness, like most of these um, cars probably won't go up until uh, some of them will be up after Melbourne, which is going to be a bit difficult, so I'll probably have to do my predictions for the following Grand Prix. But um, in this case, uh, the first few that will be up before then uh, will definitely be for, for, for Melbourne predictions at least. But after the first Grand Prix, obviously, we'll be able to get a bit more a bit more of an idea on the, where the, the cars are at the moment. It's still a bit up and down about uh, the performances and who was sandbagging and who wasn't. Um, they just didn't really have great winter testing, if I'm honest with you. Uh, they didn't stand out to me. Um, I feel like everyone's putting down you know, McLaren's chances a little bit, uh, whether that's just being hopeful or anything like that. But we'll have to see. Hopefully, you know, Racing Point could spring a surprise. It is a nice livery. So hopefully it does get quite a bit of TV time. Uh, it's a lot more pleasing on the eye than, say, you know, the Haas. Um, better looking than the McLaren, I feel, just for the fact of, you know, orange and blues. It's not exactly great, but coming across the line to finish the race, um, we really didn't get fault for good. We stayed P12, um, which is my prediction of where Perez could be. But uh, we'll have to see about that. Um, winner of the race is obviously, you know, the Red Bull. A um, little bit of a trend going on here. It's, um, he usually seems to be the Red Bull. As Christian Hall has dyed his hair black, um, Pierre Gasly wins the Kota Small Circuit race. Um, couldn't think of the official name. So some of these, uh, some of these textures in the in these coming up videos are slightly off. Um, this is an older version of the season one where these were created, but for the most part, everything will be in order and um, and stuff like that. So there may be some inconsistencies with the first half, the first five, and then the second five will be on the newer version. So on and so forth. So that you just have to bear with it. Um, that's been it for this one, guys. Hope you've enjoyed. Um, see how our predictions stand up after the race in Melbourne. That's been it for me, guys. Take care, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.